This conference will now be recorded. Okay, welcome everybody to uh, another edition of Squash Canada's webinar series and specifically our athlete development series. Tonight's topic is Next Gen and Junior National Team Pathways presented by our uh, one and only Squash Canada Director of Athlete Development, Jamie Nichols. Jamie doesn't need much of a, an introduction, but he will mention uh, his background in a minute, so I won't get into that too much. But just a quick high level um, intro on what the webinar will be about is it's really a, a high level intro as to what our future will look like um, as we emerge from COVID and continue the quest to be a world leader in, uh, in the sport of squash. Uh, Jamie will talk about uh, the transitioning for some of our top provincial junior and national team senior members and uh, our commitment to uh, developing uh, kind of those next gen athletes. So he'll get into all those fun specifics here in a minute. Just a couple of groundkeeping rules. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat. Uh, the, the actual webinar piece won't take too long. And so we'll answer all questions at the end. Uh, I'll facilitate any questions. Just type them into the chat as we go and we'll, we'll get to them when Jamie is finished. Otherwise, just keep your mics muted and your webcams off and uh, we will get started. Take it away, Jamie. Okay, thanks a lot, Jeff, for the intro and thanks for everybody for coming on. We've got uh, a great group of coaches, athletes, players, um, the whole gamut from across the country. Um, particularly want to give a shout out to the BC folks that are just probably finishing up school and or maybe they're uh, in between training sessions right now. So thanks to everybody for coming on. Also, we'll introduce, um, we've got four quasi guest speakers uh, today, uh, and I really appreciate Richard Yendel, Arthur Huff, Lauren Sack, Vini Yvonne, Proven Cal um, for coming on as well. They'll be speaking to you um, a little bit later on in the presentation. So uh, I think I think this is gonna be a fairly, fairly quick um, webinar. My plan is to get through it in about half an hour and then leave a good healthy amount of time for questions if they arise. But for those that have plans uh, this afternoon and this evening, we will probably have you out of here by 7.30. So uh, the agenda for tonight, as Jeff said, it's um, next gen and junior squad uh, programming. And sort of the first thing I'm gonna do is just give you a quick overview of what we've been working on at Squash Canada um, and, uh, and sort of the overview of our 10 year program. Uh, we're then gonna talk about the athlete pathways and in particular the next gen and junior programs. Um, we're gonna talk about provincial training center programming after that and then we'll have a little update on events and then into a question and answer. Um, as Jeff said, if you have questions as they come up, just put them in the, in the chat uh, and we'll, we'll get to them later. If there's something really burning, he will stop me. Um, I guess I forgot to introduce myself. I see a lot of familiar faces on the call, which is great. Um, but a quick quick overview, I've been the Squash Canada Athlete Director um, for six months now. It's definitely not what I had in mind when I took the role. I was hoping to be traveling around and on the squash courts, but we have taken this opportunity to, to do a lot of legwork that you'll see. Um, so I grew up in the 90s, great time to grow up playing squash. Um, we had a world champion, a lot of activity. Um, I went to Western, played there, um, and then uh, I fell in love with coaching. So I started coaching in Toronto, uh, started a, a fairly large program at the Badminton and Racquet Club, then went on to found the National Squash Academy with Jonathan Power and Gary Waite. That was a lot of fun. And then I was the executive director at Squash Ontario most recently before taking this role. So I eat, breathe, and sleep squash. I love Canadian squash, and I'm, I'm really excited to be um, speaking to you today and part of the program. So here we go. <clears throat> So if I go back just quickly here, so there's two, two components and two phases of the program that we're trying to put in place. None of this is gonna happen overnight, um, we know that. And so there's two main phases. First phase is to really implement a world-class program in the next five years. And that means infrastructure, building blocks, um, networks that we're going to use to then catapult to have a world champion by 2030, as well as sustain top four finishes. So there's a lot of work to do behind the scenes. We've been studying a lot of other successful models. Tennis Canada jumps out, England squash, Egypt squash. Um, and our goal is to really take the time and, and put this together properly. Um, we've been so fortunate to have so much success in Canada, but often it has been, you know, in spite of the programming in place. And so we want to change that. We want to make it so any player entering the Canadian squash system from eight years old has a clear pathway to get all the way to the podium. 
So that's the plan. How we're going to do it? Um, there's five pillars of the first phase. The first one is a defined and integrated athlete pathway, which we're going to talk about today. Um, secondly, we know we need to increase our junior base and performance. Uh, we know we need to sustain and maximize current national team potential, which is a bit a big part of today as well. We know revenue generation and increased exposure for our sport is going to be critical. And we know we need to get a facility plan working. Um, my belief is that the next big builds in Canada will be schools, universities, outdoor courts. We need to be innovative and we need to get more courts at the grassroots level that allow us to sort of fuel the engine uh, for high performance. So our define and integrated athlete pathway. The big philosophy and concept here is that traditionally Squash Canada has sort of overlaid programs on top of some of the great infrastructure that's already there. Um, and we've had a lot of success, as I mentioned, but there hasn't been a real integration within what's already happening on the ground within the provinces, within the regions, within the clubs. And so that's, that's the real philosophy. And that's why some of the folks are going to speak to you later from around the country. We know we need everybody rowing the boat in the same direction. And so our goal is to integrate Squash Canada programming into what's already taking place. And so um, with that, you'll hear about this as well. We're proposing six provincial training centers. Um, and they'll largely be in the, in the big centers, Vancouver, Calgary. There'll be one in the Prairie uh, region, Toronto, Montreal, and Atlantic Canada. And those hubs will be operated in partnership with Squash Canada and the provinces and territories. Centers will operate virtually as collaboratives of all the top coaches and players. There'll be additional regional centers supported by Squash Canada and the PTs. And the goal is that a junior can move through the pathway, club, regional, provincial, and international team programs with the same messaging and coordinated pathways. Everybody set, everybody's speaking in the same sort of language and everybody's working together. Within that, last week we talked about national physical and testing program with defined benchmarks, athlete coach accountability for YPI training logs competitions. And we know we need to get our players out traveling as much as possible. Canada is a big country, so we need to bring ourselves together within Canada, but also get out internationally to compete. Very important. So in talking about the athlete pathway, we have a detailed pathway document that's in development that will be in line with, with long-term development. And it'll, it'll provide a lot more detail to these um, different components. But we know from a baseline that a player would move to from a club program to a regional program, then they start getting into their provincial programming. They're playing provincials, they're playing nationals, they're competing for Canada Winter Games. They might be traveling to the US Junior Open. At that point, they're gonna turn into national players where they're really focusing on international performance. They might play World Juniors. They're certainly gonna be playing um, CJO, USJO. Our Canadian Junior Squad is sort of um, the next step to that, where we want our very, very best juniors playing internationally with that as their main focus. So we want them playing senior events, we want them playing World Juniors, we want them in the Pan Ams, we want them at the British Junior Open. The next pathway is Canadian Next Gen Squad, uh, and there's two streams here is PSA and College Squash. And these are athletes that have transitioned out, to ju out of juniors and into either playing pro or playing college squash. And then we've got our Canadian Senior Squad, these are full-time PSA players, this is their uh, day job, if you will, and they're competing full-time to be the best that they can be. So, as I said, traditionally, um, we've had a lot of great success, but in recent years, we've sort of missed out on the, both the Canadian Junior and the Canadian Next Gen pathways. This is in a large part due to the, to the U.S. college system. We know that most of our best players are now going down to the U.S., and really we've lost contact with most of them, and we haven't, we haven't sort of embraced that pathway, and a lot of them have not returned back into the Squash Canada ecosystem and we've lost a lot of great players due to that. So we know that this is happening now, we need to embrace it and we need to highlight it as a, as a strategy for the future. So these two pathways are what we're gonna focus on, Canadian Junior Squad and Canadian Next Gen. Okay, uh, this is my first foray at adding pictures into a, uh, into a presentation. I'm really working on my uh, PowerPoint skills, um, but the question might, might linger out there, why play for Canada? see how happy Holly, Andrew, Danielle, and Sam look. Why wouldn't you want to play for Canada uh, with those medals and those smiles? Um, but, but a couple of things I wanted to highlight. Um, you know, wearing the Maple Leaf is the highest level of competition in our sport. It's what every young athlete should dream about. Uh, you get to travel the world. You get to push yourself to new limits. You get to play sports for a living. Amazing. Um, 
I had a conversation with uh, Andrew Schnell earlier this week just about his experience. <clears throat> and he's now in law school, or he's now graduated law school, or sorry, he's in law school um, and he's interning. Uh, and he, he said that uh, going through law school was nothing compared to what he did playing professional squash. And so it really highlighted to me that you were learning this unique skill set for the rest of your life. You've got work ethic, independence, facing adversity, resource allocation, all of these great things that you learn by playing at a really, really high level in sport are going to help you. We talk about differentiating yourself. So approximately 300,000 university graduates in Canada uh, annually and less than 1,000 represent their countries in sport. So if you're looking to you know, excel in life after squash, this is a huge differentiator for you. So employers in all sectors are looking for high achieving members of their team, and there is less and less focus on academic standing. Uh, academic standing. So many people have multiple degrees now, um, and it's, it's impressive that they're able to do that, but it might even be more impressive that you're able to play for Canada and, and be a professional athlete. Um, so we want to bring support from the community uh, and Squash Canada start to finish. And the other thing I'd like to point out is the opportunity is now. Squash Canada is in a rebuilding stage right now. Um, and we're going to change that. But for you young athletes, there's a real opportunity to get on the Canadian team um, and, and a real opportunity to play at a really high level for your country. <clears throat> okay, next gen program. So this is one of the initiatives we've been hard at work at over the last four to five months. Um, we've been working closely with uh, the junior community, the junior committee, the high performance committee, and all the provinces. Uh, we think this is going to be a key to our success. So this is the soft launch today, but April 1st, this will be in full launch mode. So who? Up to 24, 12 female, 12 male, generally athletes aged 16 to 23, who have committed to playing for Canada internationally and on the PSA tour for a minimum of three years. That's who we're targeting. What? It's an integrated support system, including training, funding, um, all the things that you need to get to where you want to go. And Squash Canada is going to provide that. Why? We want to address the current gap in Squash Canada pathways and better support our young athletes as they transition out of juniors. When? Well, April 1st, this will launch, and we will be having an expression of interest period from April 1st to May 15th. And that is going to be, this is COVID related, Essentially, we have criteria that we put together and your expression of interest, because likely you have not played competitive squash in the last year, will indicate that you, uh, your commitment to, to fulfilling the criteria put forward. So we'll have an expression of interest that will go out and we'll make team selections by June 1st. How? There'll be an application process. Just wanted to highlight some of the pathways that um, you might be in right in if you're on the squad. So there's four major um, types of players that we're going to be targeting. And I'm just going to take you through them very quickly here. So number one is US College Squash. So we, we know that this is now the best squash league in the world. As soon as Ali Farag won the world championships, it was impossible to deny that you could potentially do this. Amanda Sobi as well. So we know um, the type of resources that these uh, programs have in the US, and we need to embrace that. And we know that you could go to a school and you could also become world champion. So you might be one of these people. We're going to continue to develop relationships with key CSA programs and work with athletes and their teams. You're going to have training available at Canadian hubs during the summer uh, and year-long support. So when you're back wherever your home base is, you'll have access to training, support, and coaches. Um, we want you to plan ahead and hit the ground running. We want you to build your Canadian and PSA rankings up wherever possible. And there's some great examples right now. Danielle Letourneau, Nick Sackby, Nicole Bunyan, Miranda Ranieri and Matt Serediak all went this route. Next up, we have immediate Canadian or university abroad players. So these are players that are part or full time or they're taking part or full time course loads, and they're based in a Canadian uh, hub. I also want to note that you could do this in England and Egypt as well, and probably other places in the world. So the idea is that you spread the course load course load out wherever possible and you get as much exposure to PSA and international play as possible. So this option gives you more flexibility than a CSA squash program would, and you should be able to play a, a healthy dose of PSA events um, and sort of get your PSA ranking up um, and get your ability to play for Canada up in, in the short term. This is a great option for those that might want to do grad school or second degree. If you know you've got 10 years of school, you might want to bang off the first three or four of them early on. 
So great examples, Andrew Schnell, Cameron Seth, Steph Edmison, and Mohammed El Shabagi. Most of the Egyptians, um, it might be little known, it might be well known, but most of the Egyptian top players do take this route. They start taking uh, education very early and they pair it with their PSA careers. Thirdly is immediate PSA in a phased in post-secondary education. We've seen this work very, very well. So the goal is to build up your level and your PSA ranking very early, right out of the gates, as soon as you graduate from juniors and, and potentially even while you are a junior. And you try and get as good as you can, as fast as you can, and get to become sort of a full-time pro and get that sustainability of having funding, prize money, support team in place. And then you begin to phase in education once you're already established. We've seen a lot of great Canadian players go this route. You can start taking courses here and there. You can ramp up as you're nearing retirement and still get a great education and have a great experience. So we know just recently Sam Cornette, Mike McHugh's now taking this, Graham Riding, World Open uh, semi-finalist, went on to get a business degree after his career, Nikki Tad, and perhaps uh, Holly Naughton or someone like that could go that route. Full-time PSA, squash professional career. This is a, a nice talking point that I like to bring up. So this is, we know this is the most unencumbered and best path to become a world champion. Um, you're going to be able to maximize your potential with a full focus on your squash career. Um, you need to get international traveling and travel and training. You basically just go for it. Um, and so one thing I want to highlight is that the, the career of being a squash professional um, doesn't always appeal to young people, but it is a great option for people that uh, have got to this level in their squash careers. It's a great career, uh, very high in demand in North America right now. Um, it's well compensated, flexible hours, fun job. I think any of the squash pros on this call would tell you um, it's a good life. And so don't discount it um, after you're done your PSA career. Um, I would note that you want to start getting your certification early. Maybe you become a touring pro, maybe you do some part-time coaching roles just to sort of get that level of experience. So Heather Wallace, we know, did that. Robin Clark in Toronto did that. David Phillips and Susie King in Alberta. Okay, so we're talking about the nuts and bolts of the, of the Next Gen program right now. So why would you want to be part of this program? What are you going to get from it? And in the past, we've named squads, but we haven't necessarily supported them um, the way we should be. So the athlete benefits that you're going to see when the criteria is released is um, you're going to have direct support from the Director of Athlete Development and our national coaching team. And this includes coaching, sports psych, training plan, schedule, nutrition, everything you might need. You can come to me or our team of coaches to provide. We're going to give you subsidized access to centralized training in any of these hubs. Wherever you are based, you're going to have access to high quality training at a very low cost, if any. You're going to get a Team Canada kit and you're going to have an ability to compete at international events. Um, so to reverse engineer it, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to play for Canada if you're not part of one of these programs or squads, not impossible. Funding opportunities. So I'm really excited to launch a corporate mentorship program uh, this coming summer. We want to give you your best foot forward in terms of uh, marketing yourself for sponsorship. We want you to be able to access government programs. We know it's expensive to play international level squash and we're going to help you do it. Uh, we have programs that cover insurance, Bell Connect uh, phone plan. You can get subsidized NCCP courses. We're going to be ensuring that squad members get recommendations to Canadian PSA hosts for wildcards and local spots. Um, and you're going to be able to say that you're a member of Team Canada and it's actually quite topical right now with COVID. Um, and also if you're you know, at a university and you need exemptions to get away to travel, this is something that's going to go on your resume. You're a Team Canada member. Athlete requirements. <clears throat> so for the next gen program in particular, there's two streams and they'll be uh, different in their level of commitment, but they all contain the following. So there'll be a minimum of PSA and domestic event requirements. You'll need to participate in the centralized training subs as available. We're not going to demand that you're there. But if you're, you're in town, we want you to participate. You will need to submit a YPI, competition schedule. You must have a named support team, training log. You must be a professional. And um, that's something that we're going to bring to the table as far as accountability goes. We're going to tell you what you need to do it, but you're going to have to be the ones that do it. You're going to have to have at least a top 50 Canadian senior or a top 20 U23 club walker rating, realizing that there hasn't been any activity over the last year or so um, there's going to be some flexibility there but you have to have a, and maintain a canadian ranking for sure there'll be some safe sport or squash canada sorry you'll need to sign a squash canada athlete agreement this will include things like code of conduct anti-doping safe sport 
all related Support Canada uh, requirements. And as I said, this will be in detailed, released April 1st. Next up will be the junior squad. So the junior squad, and, and hopefully there's lots of juniors out here, we are going to mirror this program with a junior program. So we're looking for up to another 24 juniors, and they're generally going to be age 14 to 18. And these players have committed to playing for Canada internationally and pursuing um, the next step, which, which is the next gen squad. Same thing, you're going to get access to all this integrated support system, including training, funding, uh, et cetera. Um, why? We know that we need to support our top Canadian juniors um, to, to get out there and, and get the things that they need to make the next gen and senior national squads. Uh, and when. So this will be a this squad will be launched April 15th with a May 15th deadline for expression of interest and a June 15th naming. Okay, I'm really excited to talk about provincial training centers. Just gonna take a little sip here. So <clears throat> again, we've been working very hard on this program, and the goal again is to integrate with what's already happening in the provinces and the regions. Um, and so uh, these six virtual training hubs, the goal is just to bring the best athletes and coaches in the region together as often as possible. Each region will have their own sort of flair to it. Um, they're likely to move around facilities. They're likely to use all the best coaches available. Um, but the goal will be the same, getting the best people together as much as possible. So any senior next gen or junior national team member will have access to these facilities and these programs and also we'll be overlaying provincial team members. So if you're just on the cusp of making one of these squads, but you're on your provincial um, team radar, you're also gonna have access to these programs. Um, and so at this point, I just wanna quickly turn over a few people on the call um, to, to give a one to two minute update on what's happening in their region as far as a provincial training center, um, you know, what types of activities might be happening and when this might be launched. Um, so we're going to start with BC and we'll turn it over to Richard, then we'll go to Arthur and Alberta, Lauren in Ontario, and then Yvonne. And, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the Prairie and Atlantic regions. So Richard, over to you. Um, okay, well, uh, in BC, um, we, we actually went through a high performance uh, evaluation last year, and this has all kind of fallen in time. Uh, very nicely with Jamie coming on board. Um, we've actually launched our high performance program in March. So we're just finishing our first month of uh, coordinated training. So we've had all of our, I think we have 20, roughly 24 provincial athletes that have been named in BC. All of those athletes have been uh, given COVID exemption through the Canadian Sport Institute. And since March 1st in Vancouver, we've had roughly uh, 18 athletes coming together regularly in smaller training groups um, at one of our clubs here. And, you know, basically uh, we've had two match days and uh, a number of, of training days, which integrate our senior elite athletes as well as junior elite and high performance. So we've created three different statuses for our program at the moment. Um, that's been great. We're up and running. We're looking at having a, a bit of a satellite um, program out in Victoria as well. We're just still trying to organize a club um, to base a few of the athletes that are out there so that they can have uh, regular weekly programming available outside of their regular club programs. Amazing, Richard, thank you. So if you're a BC athlete and you want more information on the program, Richard's your point person. Uh, great stuff, Arthur. Hi guys, good evening. Yeah, we're really excited at Squash Alberta to get this tr these training centers together and all the pros are on board to uh, to help out with this. We'll be putting together a schedule so the clubs know which nights they're, you know, that they'll be uh, doing their, their camps and stuff. The focus to bring together is our top seniors and juniors with guest coaches, athletes um, we're going to try and foster a mentoring system uh, so we're going to invite coaches as well as foster coach and develop bring officials together as well on the same evening so that there's an uh, officials ex experience as well and we're looking at monthly camps maybe two hours long during the weeknights 
and uh, Edmonton, Calgary, and all the top, all the clubs have sh shown an interest in hosting one of these. So I'll be, I'll squash Alberta and myself, can I quarterback this so that those clubs, they can just run it that night. We'll get the coaches together, we'll get the athletes together to go there. Um, with the input from those coaches, we have a junior committee together. So we talk on a regular basis and the junior committee is uh, a bunch of the pros in the cities. And Calgary and Edmonton are on, bo on board with this. So um, it sort of provides a development opportunity for players and coaches and officials. And, uh, and, summer, and also Canada Winter Games will be an extension of this model as well. So yeah, we're pretty excited about what's, go what's gonna happen. You're doing a great job, Jamie, thanks. Thanks, Arthur, appreciate it. And uh, again, if you're an Alberta athlete, Arthur will be your point person for the program. And um, he has a ton of experience and there's a ton of great people in, in Alberta, as we know. Um, so over to Lauren at Squash Ontario. Hello, everyone. Um, we are lucky enough here at Squash Ontario that a couple summers ago, Jamie um, actually kind of started up a summer training program. So we do have the bones of it already in place. So for the last two summers, we've had uh, training approximately three times a week, um, particularly in Toronto, mainly at the cricket or the TRC or the TAC. Um, this is predominantly for the playing PSA pros. Uh, Jamie had also included some of our top university players in the very top of our juniors in some of those sessions. Um, that's something that we will be going forward with this summer, COVID pending. Uh, throughout the season, we also have our talent ID program. So um, about 24 to 36 boys and also girls have their two-day training sessions throughout the uh, camps throughout the season. Um, and we also do our week-long uh, summer camps, which we're also hopeful that we'll be able to do this summer. Uh, and yeah, so we, for the summer training um, in the past, we've had coaches like Robin Clark, Marcy Sear, Mel Jans, Scott Arnold, Lawrence Delisau, uh, and we'll hopefully be working with all of those pros again. And now that we kind of have squads named, um, it'll be great for us to get in contact with everyone and start sorting stuff out as soon as we can get back on courts doing camps. Um, we should also, I should also note, so we will be naming our Canada Winter Games squads um, very shortly, which is going to be in 2023. Um, and there will also be separate camps for those squad members um, with the Canada Winter Games coaches once they're named. Great. Thanks so much, Lauren. So if you're an Ontario athlete, Lauren's your point person for this program. Next, we'll go over to Yvonne, who's actually been, they've been running a center in uh, Quebec for a long time. He tipped me on to the concept and he's been a long time men's national team coach. So uh, take it away, Yvonne. Yeah, historically, we've, uh, we've used the MAA where I, I've been based for many years as our uh, training center. It was basically, I mean, Montreal, it's a bit different because it's a, you know, it, most of high-level squash is uh, is in the city, so it's it was what was good. It was a one-stop shop, uh, you know, coaches, uh, fitness trainers. We had a um, medicine clinic. Uh, we had a sports psych, a nutritionist, everyone, everything on site. But uh, as some of you may know, the, the club is being rebuilt, so we're relocating, and it looks like we're going to be going to Club Atwater. So Dave Phillips, who's the Pro there will be joining me to run the center. Um, we do regular sessions, uh, juniors and seniors, sometimes together, sometimes split up. Obviously, juniors after schools and seniors during the day. Uh, and the summer is usually used. Uh, we do a lot of uh, fitness training with our fitness trainer. Uh, now, depending on when the uh, competitions will start again, although well, we might have to revise that, but. Uh, I invite anyone from other province to drop in. I'm a strong believer in uh, mixing up the players. You might get the hit with uh, Ayarjon, who's there, who trains there regularly. 
maybe even chandelier and i noticed jamie that you didn't put down his pathway but uh, i can tell you all about it if you come to montreal which might be different than most of the other athletes that you name so um that's it montreal uh, is good it's all centered and we get all the players in the same club which is good great yvonne thank you and and you raise a really good point about <clears throat> the inter the inter hub um opportunities we would encourage all of our players to travel around and whenever they're in any of the other hubs you'll be welcome with open arms um so thanks to yvonne for that so just touch on the prairie and atlantic and also our friends in the territories with with covid and interprovincial travel restrictions uh, it's been a little bit trickier to get um, these particular centers off the ground or these particular regions off the ground but we have plans in place absolutely to have a prairie uh, regional center as well as an Atlantic Canada regional center with the exact same concept uh, where the best players come together as much as possible and our friends in the territories will have access to both the Alberta and the BC um, uh, centers uh, when applicable so uh, that will be coming down the pipeline okay that's um that's the meat of my um, presentation on the next gen squads, I'm certain there'll be uh, questions and comments, but I wanted to take the opportunity just to give you a quick uh, events update so the athletes can start to think about what might be the next time to represent Canada would be. Um, so there was a, a Pan Am U23 qualifier event in El Salvador, um, May 16th to 22nd. The event somehow is, is technically still on, but uh, Canada has withdrawn our entry as of last week. Um, just due to protocols, due to quarantining, it just wasn't going to happen for us. Um, so disappointing, but um, uh, that's the story. World Junior Individuals and Women's Teams is still a go, um, and it's scheduled for August 9th to 20th in Cairo. Um, they seem to be doing a great job in Egypt with uh, COVID protocol. Um, so we're going to put our best foot forward and get our best players there if we can. Um, we'll have more criteria available May 1st um, with team selection decision to attend on June 1st. Um, so any of you world junior eligible athletes, or this is still a possibility. There's a new event um, which will appeal to a lot of our next gen players called the Pan Am Youth Games. It's a U23 multi-sport event, so it's, it's like the Pan Am Games just for younger people. Um, and this will be a program for the next, presumably uh, for the future. And it is scheduled for September 9th to 19th um, in the fall in Cali, Colombia. So this should be on your radar uh, if you're a next gen U23 athlete. As of right now, the Canadian Junior and Senior Championships, this is um, certainly not in stone and you won't see it on the calendar yet, so don't hold me to it. But there is plans in the works to host a combined Junior and Senior Championship uh, in late October, all COVID pending. Um, and so stay tuned for that uh, as of June 1st. Uh, sorry, uh, with by June 1st, you'll hear more about that. Canadian Junior Open and the U.S. Junior Open are scheduled uh, December 2021, and the Men's World Team Championships um, is also scheduled December 2021. So with that, uh, I know I went lightning fast through all this, um, but a lot of a lot of good info. Hopefully. Um, people are excited about what's coming down the pipeline. And I think with that, I will open it up to questions and those that want to depart, feel free. Great, thanks, Jamie, for that uh, great presentation. Uh, we welcome anyone to uh, ask their questions in the chat and uh, we will facilitate those as they pop up. While we're waiting for any questions, just a friendly reminder for those of you on the call that uh, Squash Canada has uh, a couple of more uh, coach PD webinars coming up, but uh, they are certainly open to anyone, players, coaches, officials, club owners, anyone that wants to uh, participate in them, and they're both free. The next one is April 6th, and it's on uh, a variation of squash called Squash 57. It's the UK racquetball, so to speak, and uh, we're very excited to uh, introduce that to you. And then April 20th, We've got a uh, webinar being presented by Eric Baldwin on doubling down on double squash. So helping uh, introduce double squash into your club and enhancing your programs there. So we're very excited about those webinars. And then come May 1st, we will have uh, many more webinars. We're lining up more coach, athlete and officiating webinars to come. We're working on a officiating uh, determine the match call 
fun webinar. We've got Nicole Bunyan, one of our national squad members, looking to do a webinar. And then obviously Jamie and I will be back for more in the coming weeks as well. So stay tuned for all of those. With respect to questions, Jamie, first question. For the next gen training get togethers, what are the likely frequencies of those uh, get togethers? I see um, that question is from Jay. So for, as far as my experience in Ontario goes, Lauren can corroborate, but they're typically heavy, heavy in the summer. So three days a week, um, every week for about 10 weeks. And then during the year, it's a bit more targeted because the pros are typically playing, um, but we would try and get people together at least once a month. Um, and so that's the Ontario frequency. Lauren, okay. you, you agree? Uh, yes, I agree. Obviously, we're in a little bit of a weird place with COVID, but we're hoping, obviously, by late spring, um, early summer, we'll be able to get it going. So, Lauren, if you can stay on, um, Rob Walford has a question about Ontario Provincial Training Group, similar to BC. So those uh, that live in Ontario, it's been a pretty frustrating process, uh, given that many squash courts are still closed. Um, Lauren, do you want to comment? Uh, yeah, so um, the government has not made an exception for non-Olympic sports uh, in Ontario. Uh, so as we know, that is a bit tricky for squash. Um, those sports do have their high performance athletes training um, regularly. We have put in a petition to have that changed, um, which hasn't gone through. Um, so I've reached out to any of the players on our high performance squad who will hopefully be eligible to um, train under some more regular conditions as opposed to our return to play guidelines. So any athlete that's going to be eligible for that has already been contacted and we're in the process of working with local clubs and health officials to get some leniency on that. And for, for anybody out there across the country, Squash Canada is available to help if there's a letter. I've been writing letters for athletes um, acknowledging that they're national level uh, athletes. So if anybody needs some administrative support, especially with these, these squads, once they're named, um, that will help with things like this. Any other questions, anyone out there, please don't hesitate to ask. If you have a question, please don't hesitate to ask. If you're thinking it, somebody else may be thinking it too. Yeah, I'll, I'll stay on for, for a few minutes, Jeff. So, um, but uh, I think for most, if you're potentially on um, potentially on the radar for one of these squads, April 1st, I want to see your applications in. Another question's just come in from Jay Francis there. Jamie, uh, for you and Lauren, I would assume once a squad is named, can players break into it or be removed? Yeah, good, good. That's a great question. So, you know, the concept is is, is uh, without even having criteria, there's it's going to be trickier than usual. But um, we, we, we don't have a cap on the squad necessarily. You know, if there were 13 really deserving eligible athletes, we would consider that. Um, and so I don't think if you meet the criteria, the criteria will be that you're playing full-time PSA or you're, you know, meeting the, the criteria as a, as a college student. So if you're doing that, chances are you're going to stay on the squad. And if you're doing that currently, chances are you will get on the squad. Um, staying on the squad is really about meeting the criteria. And there will be some benchmarks in year two and three. Um, we want to see your ranking sort of at least maintain themselves. Um, but that is to be determined as we get some events under our belt. So next question, uh, another one from Robert Walford. Any tips for grade 11 students applying for fall 2022 NCAA college squash admission? Rob, I, I owe you a detailed email. I'll get you that tomorrow. But yes, I have lots of tips. Too many, too many to pontificate on right now. It's obviously very challenging for 
it's challenging for our Canadian athletes, but it's also very challenging for any international student, um, more so for Canadians that aren't able to play. But um, it's, it's not an ideal situation for our best uh, grade 11 students, but I can definitely help, and I will. So again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to type in chat. Jamie and I are more than willing to stay on for uh, for as long as needed to answer any questions. So uh, if you don't have any questions, yeah, don't hesitate to depart. But if you do have questions, please, by all means, stay on and Jamie and I will, uh, will assist. Uh, question slash comment from Jay Francis. Many countries have actually been able to boost their rankings with small PSA events. At the moment, Canada is not able to. Any plans for the immediate future for all these young players? Great one. This was, Jay, you're on it tonight. This was actually, should have been in my presentation. Um, but with so much uncertainty with COVID, I didn't necessarily want to put anything on paper. But absolutely. So you see what other countries are doing. They're able to have these domestic events count for PSA rankings. And there is a plan in place to have a small circuit um, in some of the major centers specifically targeting sort of 3K and 6K levels where anybody on these sort of next-gen squads or anywhere on the radar can accumulate points. It's just so difficult to schedule them right now, but it's definitely on the radar and it's definitely something we're going to do. I just I don't have many details, but great point. Uh, next question from Spider. Uh, hope you're doing well, Spider. Uh, any support uh, for those in uh, in the cusp or next level down to this programming? Definitely. So you'll you'll see the the provincial um, training hubs will have integration between provincial level players and the nationals named members. And so, in particular, for your groups, Spider and in, in NWT and in the Yukon. We would like to see your groups integrating with those BC and Alberta programs, even if they're not quite at that same level, because it's just so important to have your players get that exposure. If they don't get the exposure, they don't get access to the environment, they, they won't get to that level. Um, so, so definitely we see the best 12 year olds in the, in the country being able to train alongside these programs. We know that's the Egyptian model. Everybody's in the same place. And so if a 12 year old can, you know, watch and be inspired by the national team athlete. Maybe they're not on court together, but they're in the same environment. They're watching. I think it's really important. Uh, next question from uh, Ravi Seth. With COVID right now and low number of events, is it better to wait and apply to the team when COVID is over? No, I think we want your intent is really all we're looking for. So there'll be no strategy in terms of when to apply and in, you know, if your ranking is low. If you're committed to fulfilling the criteria and playing for Canada and um, you're at a level like you are, Ravi, um, this is the right program for you. So I, I wouldn't wait. We want to get started right away if that is your in intent um, to, to play PSA, to play for Canada. Um, now's the time. We'll take that into consideration. Perfect. Great questions, everybody. Any other questions, please go ahead and type in the chat. Jamie, maybe a question for you. I think the, the biggest biggest thing, I think, from a Squash Canada perspective, and correct me if I'm wrong, is we really do just, we want to know if you're interested in playing for Team Canada. We want to know your, your desire to be involved and that, you know, Squash Canada is willing to try and do what we can to support you in your your efforts to uh, be on these squads and train and be part of PSA and do those things. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, Jamie, but really it's, if you have even the slightest interest in maybe being involved, you know, reach out to Jamie and talk to him about your, your interest level and whether you think you fit or not, because you might think you don't fit, but maybe you really do. So that's my view on it. 100%. Nailed it, Jeff. The, the, the only caveat I would say to that, and, that, and uh, right now we want expressions of interest, but th this program is, is going to be a world-class program. And so if you're involved, there will be accountability on the athletes. And I, I think it's really important. Um, this isn't just sort of putting my hand up and saying, yeah, I think I'm interested in this. We want to see that you're committed. And that doesn't necessarily mean that your level is super high, 
or you're ranking super high, it means you've you're doing training logs, you've got a support team, you're taking it really seriously and you're being a professional. That's that's the major criteria as far as um, this program is concerned. You're in, you're all the way in, and you're taking it as seriously and as professionally as possible. Your level um, is not critical right now. Perfect, thanks, Jamie. And yes, Robert, uh, to answer your question, a copy of the uh, PowerPoint will be sent to all participants as well as the video recording uh, will be sent out probably tomorrow morning uh, once Jamie and I have the uh, recordings and the PowerPoint uh, um, ready to go and uh, you'll get that from me as well as if you uh, misplace the recording because this is a free Squash Canada webinar uh, you can access any of our free webinars on our website under the education tab there is webinars and under the accordion that says past webinars there are uh, all of the free webinars that are listed there. You can watch them on our YouTube channel that's linked right to our website. So uh, you will have access to all, all free webinars. Last call for questions. Any other questions of Jamie? Thanks everyone. I wanna thank again, uh, just having our, the coaches um, Yvonne, Arthur, Richard, and Lauren on as well. So uh, I really appreciate you guys, your support for the program. It means a lot that we're all working together now. And uh, just even having you guys on this, um, on this call means a lot to me. So thank you. Perfect. Well, I think with that, Jamie, I think that's all of the questions. Uh, again, on behalf of Squash Can, everybody, Jamie and I thank you for attending tonight's uh, athlete development webinar on next gen and junior national team pathways. If you have questions, if you think of them after the fact, please, please, please email Jamie. He is always willing to, to chat with you and answer your questions. And uh, we are there to support you guys uh, 100%. So again, thank you for attending. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys on our next webinar on April 6th, Squash 57. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.